Any of you running on empty today? Running on empty. Can't do it, can you? I had a friend named Marvin Strange. He was a pilot back when I was flying around, and he was notorious for flying in on fumes. The person who sometimes gassed up our planes would say, well, Marvin came in again, and it was fumes. And I always wondered how long Marvin would last in the flying business, but it wasn't running on empty that got Marvin. It was flying into a storm, and he was killed. You can't, you can't do it. You can't fly on empty. Dad uh, knew how to get the most out of his gas tank. Back in the day, you could slosh the tank. How many of you have ever been with your grandparents or something when they were running out of gas and they were doing this and they could go another two miles? How many of you have ever done that? Also, so you can, you can run on almost empty. It is the emptiness in life and within ourselves of a life lived apart from God that can lead to a turning of God and a further emptying of self to receive the life-giving and life-sustaining power of the Spirit in our life, power for the purposes of God. You know, Jesus is our example in this. One time he was hungry. We read about this in John chapter 4. And the disciples came to him out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. You can't run on empty, can you? But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? No. My food, Jesus said, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. You see, Jesus was running on empty, but he was filled. Filled with the Spirit of God to do the work of God. We read also in 2 Corinthians, Paul speaking. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Now, this is just one of the great paradoxes of life. We try to fill ourselves so that we can have power when really the true power is in emptying ourselves. Like Jesus said, I have food you don't know about. And that's really doing the will of God is sustaining my real life. Oh, I could eat and stay alive, but there's something. Man shall not live by bread alone. We go further, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 10. Paul writes, we always carry about in our body the death of Jesus. That's an interesting phrase, isn't it? In some sense, death is empty. You go to a funeral and you want that person to speak and to talk, but, but there's, it's empty. It's an empty body. The spirit is gone to be with God. And in a sense, Paul is saying, we all carry about in us a certain emptiness so that the life of Jesus can be revealed in our body. Now, let's be honest. Isn't that what we really want? Don't we really want to partake in the life of Christ and, and be glorified with him and go to heaven someday? Don't we really want to enjoy the life of the Lord now? Well, Paul says, you know, there's got to be an emptying. There has to be a death in us. And I carry it around. So I don't want to be around somebody carrying around death. You will when they're filled with the life of Jesus. You see, the problems we have in this life is people are not carrying around the death of Jesus in their body. If you're carrying around the death of Jesus, then you have died to yourself as much as he did. You're opening yourself to the Spirit, and the life of God is filling you so that now when people meet you, they're meeting a little piece of the life of Jesus. You're running on empty. You've emptied yourself, but you've, you're filled. You're filled. Romans 15 and verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is our example in this. And I know there's a sense in which he came to die for us. And that, that's a big deal. But he also came to show us the way to life. 
It was through a death, a burial, and a resurrection. When you were baptized into Christ, you partook of that symbolically. When you were buried in water, you called upon his name, you repented of your sins, you confessed his name, you turned from the old life that you were carrying around, and then when you came up out of the water forgiven by the blood of Christ, you had a new life. Now, we still carry around that life sometimes. But Paul says we should carry around the body of the death of Jesus in our body so that in our body the life of Jesus might be made known. Now, you know that to have the life of Jesus, you can't have the life of Denny, right? There's got to be some giving up of the self, a giving up of my plans sometimes. Sometimes people say, well, I'm sure glad we don't have to be persecuted for the Lord. I'm sure glad we won't have to die for our faith. How do you know? Maybe the Lord is calling you to go to Yemen, but you're not going. So you sit and say, well, it's, it's great that we don't have to die. You see, self, I'm not saying that's going to happen to any one of you, but I'm just saying, if, as long as we are in charge, we'll make sure nothing like that ever happens. But once you take on the life of Jesus, you don't know where it's going to go. It led him to a cross. It could lead to suffering. It will certainly lead to suffering as we try to look inward and expunge from ourself all the selfishness, all the greed, all the lust, all that's in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. This is a battle, the flesh against the spirit, to empty ourselves of ourselves. And Jesus is our example in this. Philippians chapter 2, we read about the kenosis. That's the Greek word for emptying. Jesus emptied himself. And it says, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Really? The same? Well, see, that's how we carry about the death of Jesus in our body, the emptying that he did, so that we can carry about the filling, that life of Jesus in our own bodies. And he says, really? We're supposed to be having the same attitude. Well, what is it? What is this emptying? who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be held on to, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. This idea of making himself nothing is that word emptying. Now, when we think about Jesus, he's in heaven and, and we need salvation. And he says, I will empty myself of all of my heavenly prerogatives as God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. He gave up that position. And he emptied himself of that so that he could become found in human form. Born in Bethlehem in a manger, growing up in Nazareth, being about his father's business, going into his ministry of healing and teaching, finally in Gethsemane, and the cross, and the resurrection, and the ascension, and the exaltation. All of that was because of the emptying that he did, what he gave up of himself. And when he found himself as a human being, that's when he really gets our attention because that's who we are. And now we're looking very closely to see if he's done emptying. Is he done? I mean, he left heaven. Isn't that enough? He's a human now, part of the creation. He's all God and all human. Explain that. Sorry, I can't. Maybe someday we'll understand it. But is he done emptying? Is the kenosis, the self-emptying over? No. He becomes a servant. Well, how much lower can you go? And he humbled himself. If I did what he did, I'd be saying, you know what I did the other day? I was God, really, just a few minutes ago. You know? I, wouldn't, I, I would have to be talking about it. But no, he becomes a servant and he humbles himself to be obedient. Obedience. Self-emptying leads to a humility of obedience. 
even to the point of death. That's the life of Jesus. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Well, that's all very good and well for Jesus. He died for me. I don't have to do that. Let this attitude be in you the same, the same that was in Jesus. So how do you empty yourself? You can try to be good, and you can have some success with that. Being a part of a congregation kind of helps with that. We have mutual accountability. We come together. We're encouraged. We remind each other of who we are. Having close Christian friends helps with that. Your prayer, the Holy Spirit within you helps. But it's mainly the work of God. The same work that saved you, that was his work. It's still his work to sanctify us and to empty us of ourselves. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God who works in you. It's God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing. You see, the Lord emptied himself of the prerogatives of heaven, and then he emptied himself even as a human being in humility and service to others. Even in his obedience, he emptied himself to death, and this was all the work of God in his life. It was something he cooperated with. He worked out his own salvation. But it was God who was working in him. Remember? He said, I'm just doing what I see God doing. I'm only speaking what I hear God speaking. The Father and I are one. The Father is always with me. I always do what pleases him. We can't say that about ourselves, but that's the attitude and the goal of every Christian. And we say, well, we can't have the life of Jesus like that. You already have it. When you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, tell me there's something that the Holy Spirit cannot do for you. I mean, if the Holy Spirit is God and you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit, tell me what it is you're lacking. Raise your hand if you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, why is it then our life does not reflect the life of Jesus? We have it. I mean, we have God. <laughs> with man, it's impossible. Maybe that's it. We're trying to do it ourselves. But with God, nothing is impossible. And so the Holy Spirit offers each one of us the possibility of carrying about in our body the life of Jesus. But we can't do that if Denny's still in charge. I, I, can't, I can't have the life of Jesus if I have not emptied emptied myself if I haven't come into the presence of God and allowed him to show me how full of myself I am how wrong I am how much more humble I need to be and it's his message is always lower lower Denny no lower no lower still no lower still obedience more obedience because I want you to empty yourself so that the Holy Spirit within can fill your life with the life of Jesus you see the working out of our own salvation is the working out of self that's what it is it is the emptying of ourselves until we come into the presence of God with that desire and that earnest expectation, we will never understand how full we are of ourselves and how little room there is for the life of Jesus that is potential within each one of us as a free gift. We're running on empty. But if we are, we're filled with the life of Jesus. But you see, I'm not running on empty. I keep a full tank. 
I keep a full tank in my finances. I keep a full tank in my health. I keep a full tank in my relationships. I keep a full tank in everything I'm doing because I don't want to be caught running on empty. I'm so full of Denny that there's no room for the life of Jesus that is a free gift. You see, I know we can make progress as Christians, but the progress is not trying to be more like Jesus. The progress is emptying self so that the life of Jesus might be manifest through the Holy Spirit within us. That is the trying part, emptying of self. Let this attitude be in you, the same that was in Jesus. He emptied himself. And it wasn't enough to leave heaven, finding himself as you and I. He says, now I will empty myself as a human too. Even to the point of a humble, obedient death on the cross. John chapter 17. Just before the cross, he's praying for their sake. That is the 11 disciples that are left. I sanctify myself that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. Why did Jesus sanctify himself? That we might be sanctified. He's showing us the way to sanctification, to holiness, to the life of Jesus. Let's read this in context. He says, Father, as you sent me into the world, I've sent them into the world. You see, we're sent in to bear the life of Jesus in our body. We're sent into the world. And he says, for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That gets us. We believe through the message of God's word provided by the disciples, by the apostles, the holy prophets. That's why we believe. So he's praying that we'll be sanctified too. I and them and you and me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and, I, and have loved them even as you have loved me. It's not one way for Jesus and another way for Denny. It's one way for Jesus and the same way for Denny. Exactly the same. And so we become Christians and, and we do pretty well. We accept the death of Jesus. We remember his sacrifice. We struggle against sin, but we never fully embrace the idea of emptying ourselves. We don't know how to do it. We wonder, how, how do you empty self? It's only in the presence of God that that happens. And Jesus is in the presence of God. He's praying in the Spirit, and he says, you know, I, I'm sanctifying myself. Well, Lord, aren't you already sanctified? You're perfect. You're sinless. No. No, I've got more sanctification to do. I've got more humbling to do. I've got more obedience to experience and more suffering before I can be glorified. He's talking about the cross. And if you want to know what self-emptying is, go to Gethsemane with me. Now, Jesus has lived a perfect life. He, he, I mean, really, I mean, what more could you ask? He's left heaven. He's helped people. He's healed. He's taught. Why couldn't he just ascend back into heaven and say, now, uh, do, what I, do what I said? Well, that would have been the law, wouldn't it? That had already failed. We don't do what he said. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. And he has to go through something in order to be able to send the Holy Spirit. That's why he's saying, I'm going to sanctify myself now that they might be sanctified. He has in mind that when he dies on the cross and he rises again and ascends in power, he will go to the Father and through him, the Father will send the Holy Spirit into each one of our lives. And so he's got more sanctifying to do. You mean the Lord has more sanctifying to do? Yes. But he doesn't want to do it. He's human. He's on his knees. Lord, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He doesn't want to do it. There's still not sinful self, but he's still emptying himself. He's got more emptying to do. The human part of him does not want to experience this. The spiritual part of him does not want to experience the separation from God that bearing sin will bring upon him as he dies for the sins of the whole world, for my sins and for yours. And so he's on his knees. Is there any way that I don't have to empty myself to this extent? I'm there all the time. 
Lord, do you really expect me to empty myself to this extent? I'm not wrong. You want me to apologize? He says, you are wrong. You don't know how wrong you are. Yeah, you're right, Lord. Lower, still lower. There's only one person who's been right. When you make a list of people that you've wronged and you start praying for them, if you're like me, you'll find it's a list of people you've known. All the people you've known. You see, because they didn't meet the life of Jesus. They met the life of Denny. Jesus is on his knees praying that he can have the strength, if he has to, to empty himself yet even more. Let this mind be in you, the same that was in Jesus. Only the Lord can show us how full of self we are. You won't see it in your neighbor. You will look at your neighbor and you say, you look kind of like me. We're kind of in the same boat. Don't try to get too good because I'm not very good. We're all in this together, right? Don't empty yourself anymore. You'll make me look bad. People in your life can be an obstacle to emptying yourself for God. But the Lord is saying it doesn't matter. The disciples are anxious now. It doesn't matter that my mother doesn't want me to do this. It doesn't even matter that she's going to suffer greatly in a few moments. None of his earthly associations keep him from emptying himself. Is there anyone here today who is thinking what other people will think? Is there anyone here today who are thinking what their family will think, what their kids will think, what their mom and dad will think, what their friends will think, what their co-workers will think? You're not emptying yourself. You're thinking about yourself. That's all right. The Lord was thinking about himself. Lord, is there any way to get out of this? If it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, not self, not my will, but your will be done. And when Jesus goes to the cross, there isn't any more as a human being that he can do than what he did. There isn't any lower that he can go, dying naked and ashamed before the people in an excruciating death. There isn't any lower that he can stoop from where he came or even as he was in his humanity. There is no lower that he can go. Greater love hath no man than this. Let this mind be in you. How do we empty self? It's only in the presence of God. And those things that are written in the Old Testament sometimes are helpful to us. Isaiah chapter 6, in the year that King Isaiah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his glory filled the temple. And remember the seraphims are flying. And they're crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah saw this. Now, when he saw it, what was his reaction? He said, I'm in a lot of trouble. Because God is holier than I thought. And I am worse off than I thought. Woe is me. I am a man of uncleanness living among people that are unclean, for my eyes have seen the king. The day before this happened, I don't find it hard to imagine that Isaiah is BMOC, big man on campus. I think Isaiah's walking through the Jerusalem. You know, people are coming up to him. Can I have your autograph? You know, maybe they're coming up to him saying, hey, I've got this problem. What's the prophecy on that? Is there a word of the Lord on this? What's going to happen? You know, and he's walking through there and he's saying, you know, <clears throat> they're right to treat me like this. I mean, I'm writing this great book. It's, it's the greatest prophecy book. It'll be in the Bible. I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of that guy. Until in the presence of God, 
He emptied himself. Now, was that a complete emptying? No, but it was this much. The Lord has one of the angels take a coal, place it on his lips, and cleanses him. He cleanses him. In the presence of God, you're cleansed. And then he said, he heard a voice. Who will go and who will I send? Who will go for me? And Isaiah stood up and said, well, <clears throat> here am I, Lord, send me. You see, he was already a prophet. You say, I'm already a Christian. <laughs> he was already a prophet. He was already sent, but not to the degree that he knew he needed to be sent now that he had stood in the presence of God. You see, as Christians, we can come to church, we can worship, we can read the Bible, but until we experience the presence of God in our devotion, we don't know how much lower we really need to go. We have no concept of how much Denny is in charge. No concept, whatever. We think it's normal. And, you know, and, and we don't want to give that up. You know, when I look back at my life, it's, it's been kind of, kind of great. I expect more great things, you know. You say, well, do you have the Midas touch? Yeah, God's touch. God's favor, right? Every Christian has it. Jesus had it too, but he died on the cross. You see, I'm a little afraid of this. I already know some things I'd have to give up. And I have no idea what else he might have in mind. That's humanity. You're, you're not strange in thinking that way. This is Jesus, even in Gethsemane, when he's already that empty and that low from his life, he can go lower still. And if we don't understand this about ourselves, maybe we're at the beginning of this process. We just thought it was about going to church and remember what he did. Now we heard the preacher talk a few times about being like Jesus and all that, but we had no idea. We had no idea what the Lord really had in mind for us. The wonderful life of the Holy Spirit that he had in mind for us if we could empty ourselves. Now, Denny, do you have to empty yourself to be saved? I, I don't know. I, I hope not. Uh, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot of people that have lived and died, never had any concept about this much, right? That's not the question. Jesus died for our sins. The question is, do you want the Holy Spirit to come forth in full fruition in the life of Jesus in your life? That's the question. That's the question. And the answer to that is yes. But there's something standing in the way. And that's myself. That's myself. Jesus said, if any man come after me, he must deny himself. What does that mean? It means what he did. Emptying, obedient, humble, so that the life of God could be fully shown in him. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10 tells us that it was the sacrifice of the body of Jesus that makes us holy. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says that we have the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11 says that it is through the Spirit that we are sanctified. Romans 15 and verse 16. We're sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus says, sanctify me now so that they can be sanctified. He's, he's going to go through this so that others can receive the Spirit and be sanctified too. And we've been called to be sanctified for the sanctification of others also. Because as we bear about in our life, the, the life of Jesus, we are calling people to that higher life in Him. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 said, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. You see... Let this mind be in you, but it's God who's working in you as you empty yourself. 1 Peter 1, uh, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's elect, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, that's us, through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit by obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. I have a picture there of the Holy Spirit and a part of me sanctified, but a lot of self still there. So that when you look at a certain angle, you might just see me, depending on what mood I'm in, what, what the situation is. 
But if I turn another angle, you might say that, that Denny sure has a spirit, right? Because the circumstances are just right and that came out. He's praying that we might be sanctified through and through. That only happens when we empty ourselves through and through. This is a prayer. It's a hope. It's even a dream. It's an aspiration. It's a goal. It's something to shoot for. I, I'm sure that as long as we live, there'll be a little bit of self in just the right circumstance and the way we turn. And maybe a lot, maybe a lot. But it's our goal to have this mind of Jesus inside of us, sanctified in our whole spirit, through and through, soul and body, and kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Seek the closet this week. Seek the presence of God. Allow through prayer to come into his presence and then in silence, let him teach you as he will through the Holy Spirit in your spirit what part of self he wants you to empty today.